Okay, so hey guys, what's up? Welcome to. Uh, uh, hey guys, it's me, Cowlord357. Woo! And welcome to How to Make uh, Hack and Rouse of Aether uh, Workshop Character. And just do workshop stuff in general. So, in order of what stuff we're doing, we're gonna do how to turn on controller support. Woo! How to activate the workshop beta. Yee! Uh, how to gain resources, also known as sprite sheets. Uh. Base code, also known as character, to base stuff on, if you want to, like, do that type of thing, like how I did Scorpion. Uh, spriting, also known as usepaint.net, if you don't have Photoshop, or even if you do have Photoshop, because I prefer paint.net anyways. It's this thing right down here. Uh, uh, the manual and coding, which is basically, where's the manual of coding? Uh, what's the manual do? And an, a coding example. Testing. How the heck do you test your character and uploading? Not to mention that right before spriting, actually, because I'm an idiot and forgot to do this during the making of this file, because I'm a dash darn idiot. Uh, basically, what you're supposed to do, what I have here, is uh, how to find folders, also known as how the heck do you uh, even adjust and make Rivals of Aether characters. But yeah, that's how you do it. That's what we're gonna be doing. Yeah! Hello! This is a slight tutorial on how to actually do things with Rivals of Aether. So, first thing I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna real quick demonstrate how to do a controller setup. So, as you saw there, I clicked the old Get Bigger screen, and I turn on the so I turned on Switch Pro and Nintendo Button Layout, and then it should recognize the controller at that point. So that's how you play it with controllers. So the first thing that you might notice when you open up Rivals of Aether for the first time or for the many -th time in a row is that you're not on the workshop build yet. The reason why you're not on the workshop build yet is because you have to go into a certain spot. So I'm going to just demonstrate fast that we are not on a workshop. As you can see, there is no gear thing, right? So, if I real fast... Okay, and then I go, properties, betas, and you scroll down, get workshop branch beta, and it should update if you're on auto. Okay, so now workshop, it should say Rivals of Aether Workshop Branch on your thing, and, you, and when you open it, it should look like this instead. So, now you've got Workshop Branch. How do you make a character? Well, well first off, you might want to figure out what character to base your character off of. Also known as, uh, for instance, I used, uh, heckin, uh, where is it? I used the, uh, Luigi as a reference point for Scorpion, because Luigi works uh, very similarly, sprite-wise at least, to Scorpion, so, uh, you know, I copied a lot of the code and changed up stuff, and I will also demonstrate what that stuff means during the tutorial on how to make a character. So, I'm gonna real quick do that. So, Let's just go into the workshop, find a character that you might want to modify or something. So, like, uh, I'm just going to say, what if I wanted to make a... Um... It's very common for Sandbert, but I'm like, eh, nah. So I'm going to go and find a... Where is it? Um... I'm going to find a very simple character. Where is it? Uh... I think it's probably most recent somewhere. No, I'm gonna, actually, I know exactly which character I'm going for, because I have the character. But, basically, you go and find, uh, find what character you want. I'm gonna go with Flying Man, this one. Uh, because this one's very simple, and I could very, very easily just, you know, change up that, sprites and all that. So, when you do that, when you find your character, uh, you're gonna want to do something like this. Uh, and this is uh, what I'm going to do for Eevee, by the way. It's going to be sick. But basically, what you do is you plan out all your moves. Like, smash attacks, special attacks, tilts, jab, aerials, dash attack, t 
taunt, second taunt if you're up for the challenge of doing that, because, like, Malo can do it, so if, you, if you're if you basing it off of Malo, it's really easy to do that, because you just have to do that. Uh, walk cycle if you want to uh, be, sim uh, be specific about it. Run cycle also if you want to do it simple, uh, specific. Jump and second jump, wave dash, air dodge, roll, and free fall. Those are the basics. So, uh, let's just go and find a sprite or something. So I'm gonna go with, like, uh, yeah, cow sprite sheet. If you want to base it off of a sprite sheet, which is the easiest way to actually do something like that, not this. Uh, I kind of like the Harvest Moon Cow, because the Harvest Moon Cow is awesome. So I'm just gonna go, uh, save image as. Uh, put it in wherever you want it to go. So I'm gonna go desktop. And then, once you're ready for that, open it up. Yeah, I'm gonna... Also, in order to... I have to show people how to do this, don't I? Yes, I do. So... I'm gonna real quick turn off something so that people can just not... Desktop, right? In order to find the Rivals of Aether folder, for, or at least the one that contains your the actual base characters, also known as basically all the ones that aren't your characters. You go to uh, Workshop. Is it Workshop Builds now? No, it's not Workshop Builds. Steam Apps, Workshop, Content, 383980, which is a Rivals of Aether one. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to locate the character that I want to edit, which in this case is Flying Man, so I'm going to go find him. I believe he's somewhere around here-ish. Where is it? Uh, you got it. There it is. So you find it, right? You either copy... Uh, you copy it if you want to, you know, just modify stuff. So once you're there, go Users. Your username. Then what you have to do is go and... Uh, go to View up here. Hidden Items, so that you can actually go in there. And then you click on App Data. Local. And then Rivals of Aether. And then you go to Workshop. And then you copy your dang folder right on in there. And I'm going to rename this thing as a dang cow. So before you start working on sprites, I'm also going to have to do this real fast. Because I... Wait. No, I don't. Because I have it in my desktop. I'm going to go and open the sprite sheet that I saved to my desktop. This one. So now I have an actual sprite sheet that I can use as a reference point or as just putting the sprites on stuff. So what you first want to do, actually, is go to config, right? And set your name to whatever you want it to be. So, cow. Uh, and then you go, uh... This is a cow. The code is from the Flying Man mod. Character mod. And then what you do is you do, you type in your version number, and I'm gonna just put one. URL doesn't exist here. Author also doesn't exist here, so that you, uh, author, just put whatever your name is, or put whatever pseudonym you want to use for it, because it also works with pseudonyms. So, now that that happened, uh, we're going to go with, uh, easy, uh, easy parts to start with are these ones, because all you got to do is just do this type of thing, so, character select. I'm just going to go and, actually, I'm going to find the Harvest Moon Cow, because, like, one, it's great, and two, it's great, so, uh, Harvest Moon Cow. These guys are great. Hey, that used to be my YouTube icon. Nice. Um, actually, no, I think this is actually a great way to use the sprites. Because you can either use the sprites or use something similar. So what you want to do is... Womp. Womp. Or... You might actually want to open up your layers. I use paint.net, by the way, which has plugin support, which is really nice to have plugin support, by the way. It's really useful. And if I apparently didn't open this thing in a while, I have to do this. Uh, so I'm going to 
zoom in so I can have a better view of things. Oh, no. Okay, so copy. Not my linear, because if you're going to be using sprites, you might as well go with the nearest neighbor, because the nearest neighbor just puts it onto whatever's closest to that spot. So you do that, save that, and then you've got your first sprite done, also known as the character slot. Now, except for no HUD, which I usually use a very simple thing of just copy part of the head. And since this one has a sick cow, I can just go... And then when I get to the hurt HUD, I can do the same thing because it's going to just hurt now. So, yeah, like this. Effects, flip horizontal. I'm just going to... Okay, so in order to edit stuff, you're going to want to go and download GM Edit uh, from here. It's free. I already have it, but basically you press this, you name the price, uh, basically you just go with, uh, you just do, uh, basically, uh, no, then it's just hit the downloads, and then you download it. So you go like this, and then you go click on the Windows and then you got it. Cool. So basically, uh, the, and the way to easily get everything else good, so basically what you go and do is, uh, Rivals of Aether Workshop Manual. And when you get to the workshop manual, which is officially provided by the Rivals of Aether team, because they're amazing, uh, but basically what you'll see is, here's our stuff for this, uh, basically file structure, and then basically, uh, you're going to want to go and name your home, once you, you know, figure out stuff. Here's the art tutorial stuff, here's the programming tutorial stuff, there's some really cool stuff in here, which is very useful for when you're programming. Uh, scripts is nice. Hitbox grid in indexes is also really nice. Cause ready for this? Effects. This is how I made Scorpion go burn or wrap or freeze or poison. Uh, and then here's the angles, which is very good. Uh, and then you got the um, stuff like this. And then here's the projectile properties. But you'll basically be able to find all of it on the manual, which is really nice. Actually, instead of doing that, I decided, instead of actually just making a straight-up new character, I'm just going to demonstrate through the power of, oh boy, here we go, also known as, I already have a character that works, I'm just going to demonstrate via code that I have, actually probably my best character to demonstrate this stuff would be Steve, uh, Scorpion, also whatever order the manual has stuff in is actually the order of everything else, also we're, uh, oh yeah, so, I haven't put in actual hurt box stuff on yet, but yeah, there's that. Uh, there's attacks, you know, all that stuff. This is the stuff. So, the only stuff that uh, usually is the. This is basically these three and attacks are really the only things you need to have a functional character, but the other stuff is great for extra work. Like, uh, this is why I can do misfire like Luigi. So, now if you. If you go into one of these, I'm gonna go into, uh, heckin, where is it? I'm gonna go in there because I used an effect on one of the hitboxes. So I'm just gonna demonstrate what code looks like when you actually have your code going. So we have, uh, this right here is setting what attack it is, right? Setting window value is what window it is, how many windows it has. Actually, windows is up there. But basically, uh, this thing right here sets the attack. Window account, landing lag, landing lag count. Also, what kind of category? It is explained in the thing. Window types are also in, in, in uh, explained in there. But you've got animation frames, sound effects, how to asset get. You can also use uh, sound get in order to uh, use your own custom sounds, which I will also explain in this tutorial. So, we've, uh, and right here is where we've got the hitboxes. And oh yeah, the shorter the window length, the faster the move. So, like, startup speed, right here, yeah, startup speed here, end up sp ending speed, and of course, window length. And then we've got, um, hitboxes. Angle, there's a very, very easy way for me to demonstrate this, so I'm just gonna go new. I'm gonna do, like, a 100 by 100 real fast, because it's easiest to do this way. So I'm gonna go make a cross right here so that everyone can see this thing. But basically, uh, I'm gonna just real fast type in some numbers. So 
Uh, I'm gonna put down my font size because it's too big right now. Then I'm gonna go uh, zero, 90, 180, 270. Basically, what this means is zero over here, right here, means it goes straight forward from wherever your character is facing. 90 right here, go up. 180, backwards, like get over here with Scorpion, and 270. It basically just means it's a spike. So this is your range, this is your radius and such. So 270 to zero spikes forward, uh, 270 to 180 spikes backwards, so on and so forth. This is the e easy way to demonstrate that. So I don't need to save that, but basically, uh, as you can see here, uh, we've got a good old fashioned thing called a angle. <laughs> and I believe there's also the, uh, it's not in here apparently, of course not. Because, of course. So, uh, as you can see here, we've used the effect right here, which is wrap effect, by the way, which is number eight. Uh, but I'm gonna go to one with an actual, uh, angle thing. I believe it's probably neutral special. Yeah, it's neutral special. Basically, angle flipper seven, uh, which if I look at the manual, which I did take screenshots of on my phone, because I'm really smart about that, it's good to take screenshots of important manual information for, for later use. But angle flipper 7, horizontal knockback is towards the enemy player. That's how I make it so that get over here goes wimp, and then it goes over there. So yeah, that's how that works. Uh, that's how movement and coding works. And then here is how you dang upload a dang character. So if you go to library, you open up uh, Rivals of Aether, and then once it's up, Oh, and basically once your mouse disappears, you should be able to use your controller. So... Oh! Oh, I'm not selected on the right one. So basically... In order to... You should probably first test in practice mode every time you uh, make some nice changes. So I'm gonna go... Action! Yeah, you can see the small amount of spreading that I did do. But basically, I'm gonna go to Scorpion real fast. Uh, choose a random opponent. I like level 7 because it means that they're not going to over parry so I can actually hit my moves. But yeah, as you can see, spriting and all that, not the best, but it's a nice demonstration. And I'm pretty happy with how this character went out. Yeah, as you can see, he freeze. He do that. He's got the electricity on get over here, which is... I use the sound get in order to do that. It also freezes them with hit pause, which is also an important piece to learn. You've got hit pause, hit stun, and all that other stuff. Hit pause is great for adding effect on a on a uh, stronger move because it stops literally the character's movement. Also means it's really easy to combo like this. <laughs> Yeah, like that. So, basically, now that you've gotten your character to, to what you probably- Okay, so as I was editing this, I almost forgot about one very important thing, also known as, for config, if you're gonna upload something, make sure your URL isn't set to anything unless you wanna update someone else's stuff or your own stuff. It's very important to do that. Uh, if you wanna em uh, keep your author thing empty, then you'll go to your, uh, your uh, name otherwise. Type zero or one. One is buddy right now, and the buddy uh, thing is much, much easier to do, which I probably should have used as the tutorial, but heck it. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, yeah. Pretty simple. In the Rivals of Aether workshop, there's characters that I have edited so that they're more... Or uh, that they're more or less balanced, also known as they're either better or better. I'm gonna go Spelunky configuration. Spelunker. But not Sandbert. <laughs> See if it is not Sandbert Spelunky. Nice. Okay, so now there's Spelunky, but not Sandbert, right? And once you have that ready, you can actually upload 
your thing, because I, I made modifications to a Spelunky, and I just want to make it so that he's different, also known as Matt. I want to make him, I, I wanted to make him better, so I decided to do that, so I have Spelunker, but not Sandbird. So I go here, by ye, upload item. And basically what you do here is, once it says uploaded, yeah. Basically, what you do, go here, go here, go here. You might want to pull, uh, make this as big as possible. But basically, what you do is you make it so that you, good old fashioned, what you do is once you uploaded it, if you want to make uh, add a video to it, you do add slash edit images and videos, and then you copy the link and all that. It's really easy to follow. But basically, what you do is you change your visibility, set it to public, and then it's on the Steam Workshop. And that's how you make a character. If you guys found this helpful, yay! You don't need to like it, but if you do, that could help with my mental stability. Yay! Human.